I always used to wonder if Paul Atreides was actually a hero or a villain. And guess what? I've got the answer right now. Let's talk about the mental instability of Paul Atreides. There are many scenes throughout the entire franchise that work as a testament to his unstable mentality. Inside the Ornithopter, he talks about not liking the Bene Gesserit propaganda about the prophecy. What are they shouting? Listen, al -Qaib. That means the Bene Gesserit have been at work here. Planting superstitions. They see you. They see the signs. You see what they've been told to see. And then, inside the ecological testing station, he drops a hint to make Dr. Kynes believe that he is the Lisan al Gaib. Fermin, speak of the Lisan al Gaib, the voice from the outer world who will lead them to paradise. He also tells a backstory about this woman, which he probably has heard from somebody else. I know you loved a Fremen warrior and lost him in battle. I've seen your dream. After surviving the sandworm, he gets to find out the leader of the siege community. Along with Jessica, he goes to their cavern and inside that place, he says this. Look how your Bene Gesserit propaganda has taken root. I must slay the non-believers. If they follow me, we can disrupt spice production. But right after that, Paul does the exact opposite thing. When Jessica survives the water of life, everybody from the southern region begins to believe that Paul is the Lisan al Gaib, and his mother has the ability to tolerate that poison just like it has been written on the inscriptions. And this was the reaction of Paul. It's no miracle. My mother was trained to do that. Poison transmutation is something advanced Bene Gesserit can do. I'm not the Mahdi. In the aftermath, he gives promise to Chani that he will never try to claim himself as any kind of prophet. I'm no messiah. I'm a Fedaikin. A siege tab. He also rebels Jessica for making up the story of this prophecy and spreading it all across Arrakis. It's not a prophecy. It's a story that you keep telling, but it's not their story, it's yours. We gave them something to hope for. That's not hope! But just within a couple of days, he declares himself as the Lisan al Gaib, the voice from the outer world. I can show you a couple of scenes where he was shown to be shifting his mind very rapidly. Just have a look yourself. I, I would, would strike even farther north. Then I will go further north. What does that mean? It means desert spring. I love it. I hate it. I prefer Chani. I prefer Chani too, then. I'm moving everyone to the south. I'll stay behind and cover your retreat. What are you talking about? Chani, I can't go with you. I'll cross the storms with you. Go south. He talks about how he is never going to change himself and maintain unyielding loyalty to the relationship with Chani. My allegiance is to you, to the Fremen. I'm doing this for all of us. And then he also does this. I will love you as long as I breathe. I'll take the hand of your daughter, and we will rule together over the Empire. He tells his mother that he is going to take the revenge of his father's death. Your father didn't believe in revenge. Hell, I do. And then, he also argues with Gurney on why taking the revenge can turn out to be a bad decision. Why is that a bad thing? Use it. It's not that simple. You have the power to avenge your father and you're afraid to use it? In chapter 1, he was shown to be a bit indifferent to his training. Choose your blade. I've had quite a day, Gurney. Give us a song instead. I guess I'm not in the mood today. Mood? Yeah. What's mood to do with it? And yet, he wanted to go with Duncan to the northern region of Arrakis to support him. I'd like you to take me with you. It would. That's too bad, because no. Throughout the entire movie, he had difficulties in making up his mind. And considering all of that, I have to put it this way. He is neither a hero nor a villain. We should call him an anti-hero. A man driven by the feeling of lust and vengeance with a pint of morality and rationality. Corrupted but not entirely selfish. Evil but not entirely evil. Selfish but not selfish with everybody. A liar but not an intentional deceiver. A savior who desires devotion from the victims. A survivor who likes likes to live with a bit of morality and style, hungry for power but tries to avoid getting dirty with others, a warmonger but only to attain peace and amity with others, frightened but also likes to show up when the time is rough. And this is how I would like to explain the psychodynamics of Paul Atreides. He is a very complicated person. Paul Atreides can fit in the heart of many people but he cannot fit in the brain of many others.